Welcome to the Sisterhood of Sweat. I am here today with Frank Davis. Frank Davis has been in the health and wellness industry for over 30 years and is passionate and committed to providing uncompromising nutritional products for himself, his family, friends, and others. As a child, Frank had every conceivable childhood disease, mumps, measles, pneumonia, and he struggled throughout childhood and adolescence with a compromised immune system, leading to a constant battle to stay healthy and enjoy all of the sports he loved. Frank set out to find a way to ensure that the foods he ingested had all of the original health benefits that God had designed them to have. That is why he created Optivita Health. And this was such a great podcast. You guys are going to love this. All my health geeks, all the people out there that want to stay young, age well, be in the best shape of your life, feel great, have energy levels, uh, be fit. And literally today, Frank was a wealth of information, so many studies, uh, so much information to help us with our health overall. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. It was amazing. We'll have to have him back on. I really, uh, I love it when somebody knows their stuff and they can back it up with studies and research. So I hope you guys really enjoy this and we're going to dive in without further ado to this episode. I am excited to welcome Frank Davis to the Sisterhood of Sweat today. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. So you live in Utah where my son actually shot a movie uh, called Riddle of Fire. It's going to be in theaters this year in 2024. Oh, wow. That is exciting. Yeah, he said it was beautiful there. Just like, you know, they were definitely out in the wilderness in the woods uh-huh yeah there's uh you got a little of everything here you've got uh, the forest and you've got uh, desert and you've got you know southern part of the state with all these uh, formations and you know like the zions park and all the stuff so it's uh it's unique but i love it here so you we were talking before we began about you do mountain biking. What's your favorite place to go? Well, I, I mean, I live literally at the base of the mountain. So uh, I I take off early morning and I just head up the canyon. And I have a, a route I like to go. And then I vary it a little bit by going to different uh mountain bike trails and i like to climb uh more than i like to go down <laughs> that's the challenging part yeah that is and so yeah i mean uh and there's some real nice trails in the southern part of the state you know like in moab uh known for its bike trails and i go down to saint george and i like some of the bike trails down there so just a, a beautiful way to enjoy the outdoors and get some exercise. And Oh my gosh. Oh, I, for, I left off when I was telling you about my mountain biking experience, literally it's in the Smokies. Okay. We thought we were going to be riding on the road. We're riding through the mountains on the Hills, the rocks, the, it was rough terrain. And then in the middle of everywhere, they have like this wooden roller coaster track. Oh boy. And you get on it and it is, it's a little scary. And you, and you are zipping because once you hit that wood, it's like crazy. So that was why I think by the end, I felt like my hands were just glued to the handlebars. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you, so I, li I like adventure. I mean, I like being outside. It's why I took my boot camps to uh, the Smokies for like five, six years. We did a Navy SEAL obstacle course, all the fun stuff. But like Utah, 
would be a whole new adventure, it sounds like, where you're getting the vitamin D that you need when you're starting in the morning at the base of the canyon. You're getting a whole lot of exercise. How important is it for us to be getting some sort of vitamin D? I mean, I know during COVID, they were talking about vitamin D nonstop. Well, you know, I think vitamin D in particular has uh, emerged as kind of the go-to now. They recognize that it is, it's kind of what I call the new vitamin C. Mm -hmm. They're recognizing its role, its significant role in so many bodily functions in our immune system. I call it nature's flu vaccine. It's... Uh, so that's why it got a lot of attention during the COVID uh, for bone health, for brain health, for, uh, you know, just so many bodily uh, functions. The vitamin D they're finding is the is the a key player. And uh, unfortunately, most people are significantly uh, vitamin D deficient in their blood serum levels. Part of the problem is most of the vitamin D supplementation. Well, let's put it this way. I live in a cold climate uh, from September, uh, as from November through March, uh, above the 35th parallel, which would be from Los Angeles to Atlanta, you during those months, your body does not synthesize vitamin C above the 35th parallel. So if you live in Utah, you live in, in New York, you live wherever, even if you were to sunbathe during the winter, you know, your body doesn't convert the sun to vitamin D. So they've they basically uh, associate the cold and flu season now with the deficiency, significant deficiency in the vitamin mm -hmm. D, especially mm -hmm. during that period yeah. of time. So basically we have to supplement to get, give our body that and be able to build. The old standard used to be like 20 nanograms per milliliter of vitamin D in the blood serum level. Now it's well above 50 is what they, uh, what the experts believe is what gives your body what it needs to be support the immune system, to do all the other things it has. And most people are, are woefully deficient in that. And here's a couple of the problems. We're taking in our supplementation a, a synthetic vitamin D. It's made out of lamb's wool, okay? And so vitamin D is one of those uh, unique... Uh, supplements or nutrients that can't work as a uh, by itself it needs uh, and i'm going to use an analogy it's like if you want to put a, a light in your home you know you gotta get it get it into the house and then plug it into the socket okay well there are carriers that and that take the vitamin D into the body and into the bloodstream. But magnesium is absolutely essential and critical to metabolize that vitamin D in the body, to actually activate it. It's, it's the light switch that turns it on. You can plug it in, but if you don't have that magnesium to activate it, it just stays dormant in your body and is not doing the good you think it's going to do. In fact, it's not good for you to have all this supplement without the body's ability to metabolize right. it. Right. And why is the, uh, so you, you, how do we get our vitamin D? What is the best way for us to get the vitamin D so we can utilize it in our bodies? Well, you know, and that's one of the challenges that I dealt with. Uh, I am a firm believer of whole food nutrition. So I do not like chemical isolates, anything produced in the laboratory, uh, synthesized. We use a an organic button mushroom. The mushroom synthesizes uh, the 
sunlight into vitamin D, just like a human body does. And uh, but we add to that a patented form of magnesium called magnesium glycinate, is, and that's how magnesium is found uh, is absorbed by plants from the soil. It binds it to this amino acid called glycinate, and virtually converts it from an inorganic substance to an organic. We also have probiotics and digestive enzymes with that vitamin D that are the, the carrier that brings it in and, and enables the body to absorb it. And then the magnesium is what activates that vitamin D in the body. They are all essential. You can't just throw something in there and think your body is going to be able to do it what it needs to do. Most vitamins, all vitamins in nature are a compound, a complex. And so there's these all these cofactors that are essential for that vitamin C or B or A to actually uh, do its job and benefit the body. You can't take it in a chemical isolated form without those cofactors that either activate it, facilitate it, get it into the bloodstream, whatever. And so most of us are taking a lot of stuff that is doing a, a lot of nothing for us. <laughs> Expensive P. I That's mean, it. like if you keep on taking things and I mean, if you were to listen to some of the health broadcasts over the year, if you took everything, can you imagine the fortune you would have spent? And also not knowing for sure, is that what you need? You know, am I taking too much? I think knowledge is like a key thing for everyone. So getting it in the whole food form, are, are you less likely to take too much? Oh, absolutely. Because okay. uh, you can't, you really, it's hard to OD on it in a natural form. Uh, Which is good. Because your body knows how to deal with it. It either utilizes it, absorbs it, or stores it um, for future use. I like that. In a synthetic chemical form, basically, you made a comment, you know, expensive P. Um, when you're taking synthetics, let's say like B vitamins in a synthetic form, created in a laboratory, you will notice that your urine will turn bright yellow. And that's because your body is trying to eliminate something that it's foreign to them. Okay. Uh, it's, it's its process. It would never happen if you're taking that in a whole food form. You would never see that bright, bright yellow color. That's uh, good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's so interesting. It's, it's just kind of a you know, a visual way to deter, to say, hey, you know, this stuff, my body is trying to get rid of it must not be good for me. <laughs> that's so. a good, that's a good analogy. Uh, why do you say that our U U.S. nutrition is kind of in a dangerous state? And why do you say like that the concentrated whole food nutrients are are new and a missing link. Well, um, I'll start by saying that um, this was part of my journey of health and discovery and pulling back the curtain and basically seeing how much smoke and mirrors are in the food industry and the supplement industry, et cetera. And, um, a lot of smoke and mirrors, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everybody's, you know, got something that uh, they believe in, et cetera. But when it really boils down to it, um, it's the pharmaceutical industry has taken over, quote, the supplement industry. Uh, and what they are trying to do is find and replicate something that comes in nature, but they can't patent and make money off. So they got to find a way to, to do that. And they create a chemical um, isolate that is the uh, exact uh, mirror image of the real thing. 
the problem oh is you're, uh, and so from a chemical standpoint, they say, look, the chemical structure is the mirror image of this. Therefore, it's the same thing. Body recognizes in no way, shape, or form it is. And I'll give you some examples. Um, like a Franken food. Yeah. You look at you look at anything, go to, you know, your listeners, go look at anything in their pantry. Cold cereals, uh, juices, uh, breads, pasta. It'll all be fortified with, with these synthetic vitamins. Almost without exception, you will see in in any food besides uh, ascorbic acid, which they in parentheses will say vitamin C, you'll see uh, vitamin B6 and vitamin B12, okay? But when you look at the parentheses, where, where it comes from, in B6, it will say pyridoxine hydrochloride almost 100% of the time. Well, what plant, what food is that? If you dig deep and to see what that is, it is petroleum esters blended with hydrochloric acid and processed with formaldehyde. Okay, that is the oh B. Gosh. That's the B6 you're taking. Wow. Then if you look at B12, a majority, by far a majority of the time, it will say cyanocobalamin. Again, what is that? Well, the cyano is cyanide. So how does a dead, carcinogenic, toxic chemical benefit a live organism like the body? It's impossible. That's my take on synthetic vitamins. They are drugs. They are created in laboratories. They have side effects. Uh, the only benefit is short term. It's like vitamin C in nature is a compound. It's a complex. It comprises of bioflavonoids, routine, J factor, K factor, vitamin P. Ascorbic acid in nature is just the outer protective shell like an eggshell is to the egg. It is not the workhorse of the antioxidant. So, uh, that's but so that's- fascinating. I mean, when you really start to absorb that, that's yeah. fascinating that, and, and I hate to see the direction they're trying to take it these days where they don't even want you to be able to get the information about what you could use as an alternative for your health it's it's kind of almost crazy and then then they want to make plastic meat yeah no and, and that you, you got it right on because the you know it's all about money and i'll give you an example i was talking about vitamin c yeah you know and and you know the pharmaceutical it's ascorbic acid almost a hundred percent of ascorbic acid today is produced in china a lot of it in unregulated laboratories using municipal water with known contaminants. But it's it basically, it is genetically modified corn syrup uh, processed with hydrochloric acid. It's cooked. That is the quote ascorbic acid. Now I can personally buy, because I'm in this industry, I can buy ascorbic acid as vitamin C for $4 a kilo. My uh, at my vitamin C that I produce is pure organic acerola cherry. By nature, has 25% of that cherry is whole food vitamin C. Um, so to get 100% vitamin C, I got a four times that. Well, I pay $116 a kilo for that organic acerola cherry. But I know... Uh, and you made the comment, you don't have to take as much. You don't, because uh, your body, there was a study done in Cornell University where they tried to determine how much vitamin C was in an apple. Well, they equated it to ascorbic acid and said there's the equivalent of five milligrams of vitamin C in this apple. But when they studied the results of a human consuming the apple, uh, as to the antioxidant benefit and effect, it was equivalent of taking 1,500 milligrams. Wow. 
Oh, wow. That's awesome. So, okay. So the point being, the, these scientists have no idea what is in that apple. What are the cofactors that make that vitamin C exponentially more uh, effective than taking it in a supplement form? Okay, so you're talking five milligrams versus fifteen hundred milligrams, synthetic versus real food. So you you only need, uh, and the reason they do that, the RDA was established on supplements based on synthetics. So, you know, how much do we really need in 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 a whole food vitamin? Nowhere near as much. Let's put it that way, to have uh, have the benefit. Whereas taking it in a synthetic form, you know, in vitamin C, if uh, in ascorbic acid, if you're taking that as your form of vitamin C, there are studies to show that it creates genotoxins that mutate the DNA. It contributes to atherosclerosis. Uh, it is not healthy for you. What happens is when our body takes that in, it recognizes it's incomplete and it'll rob from the collagen tissue to try and give your body that vitamin C because vitamin C is something the body can't create. It has to consume it. It is not a vitamin the body is able to produce. So when it's only getting a fraction or something that resembles a fraction of it, then it's trying to, to fill the void. But so you get maybe a short-term benefit, but long-term, you know, you're going to struggle. So now when we want to get vitamin C, uh, what are, what is the best source for our bodies? An apple, uh, lemon juice? I mean, what do you recommend? Well, there are a few of them. I, as I said, I use organic acerola cherry. Uh, maybe not as, as uh, uh, available, but they can. But uh, acerola cherry has a thousand times more vitamin C than an orange, gram for gram. And, there and is a that's fruit... important for your skin, for your, for oh, your yeah. collagen and everything, everything, and your recovery from exercise. The vitamin C is huge. You got that right. I put that organic acerola cherry in our collagen because that okay. literally uh, enables the body uh, the benefit of like six fold of that collagen, because that's what the, the vitamin C does to help the body create that collagen and utilize it. We've got, you know, studies showing that we're getting six times the amount of benefit on the collagen just by virtue of its pairing it with organic vitamin C. What kind of collagen do you use? It's a, a sustainable marine collagen. Uh, so it's been third party tested. There's no toxic, uh, you know, chemicals or, or heavy metals that you will normally see in right. stuff that's derived from bovine or chicken bones or whatever. That's just, yeah. that's just the norm. Okay. Uh, and but Yeah. Anyway, there's other there's other form. There's a there's a berry called amla a m l a has extremely high concentrations of whole food vitamin C. Um, there's another one called camu camu. Uh, these are are fruits or uh, that all have extremely high concentrated forms of it. So. So what practice do you use then to get like whole foods into your diet? Like where, where, how do we ensure that we're getting the most healthy food? Well, you, you open up a whole discussion for me because candidly, I believe today be based on our modern farming techniques no matter how hard we try, even if we're eating organic, we're not getting the nutrients out of the food because it's not there. They're grown in mineral deficient and, and uh, nutrient deficient soils. They're transported over thousands of miles. They're treated with chemicals. 
They're, uh, the soils are treated with herbicides, fungicides, pesticides, some which inhibit the uptake of nutrients from the soil. Um, and so, you know, the challenge is we are, we are going to a store, we think we're eating well and have no idea, you know, does this carrot have any vitamin A in it? Where was it grown? How long has it been in transport? An example is if you harvest, wow. if you harvest spinach today, and if you if you put it in cold storage, literally within 24 hours, no matter what you do to that spinach, within 24 hours, you'll lose 90% of the vitamin C. Within a week, you'll lose approximately 50% of the other nutrients. Well, I live in a cold climate. When I eat spinach, where is it coming from? You know, it's either coming from Mexico, Chile, or California. But, you know, it's traveled thousands of miles. It's been on shelves for a long period of time. If I lose 90% of the vitamin C in, in uh, 24 hours after, after harvest, what is still in that spinach? You know, oh so gosh. that is why I did what I did. And the wow. technology that I had, I invested into, when I first heard about it, I didn't believe. Because it, it was, it sounded, you know, too good to be true, where you could take any fruit, any vegetable, any food, reduce it to a powder form through a patented technology that incorporates a very small band of light just off visible light we call OptiDry. Um, it's a um, infrared light, but it reduces it to a powder form with zero loss of any nutrients, color, or flavor. And it locks it in so that literally we have done shelf studies uh, after 16 and a half years, still uh, no loss of any nutrients, color, or flavor, as long as it wasn't exposed to high heat or moisture. So where I'm going with this, Linda, is that uh, that is what I did. I said, I, it's a guessing game to go to the store and buy these fruits and vegetables to say, okay, I'm getting this for my vitamin A. I'm getting the spinach for my this. I'm getting strawberries for my vitamin C. But then I'm saying, well, how much is really in there? And, and is there any, so that's why I developed, uh, you know, invested in this technology. That's why I produce products that use all these whole foods, but I test it before I test it afterwards. So there's no guessing game. I take that out of the equation to say, okay, I'm getting this much vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin C, all from whole foods because I've I've removed the water, I've removed the fiber, I've retained all the nutrients, and I've done it in a form that locks it in, and I've third party validated and tested to say all those nutrients are there, and it, it's a form of a drying process, and it's also a form of a water extraction process that doesn't affect the nutrients, the vital nutrients in the plant. It just eliminates the sugar, the fiber, and the water. So, wow, this is eye-opening for everybody listening. I'm sure they're all like, oh my gosh, uh, I'm only getting maybe 1%, if I'm lucky, of the vitamin C in my spinach after it's transported. If, you know, if 90% if is gone after 24 hours, what am I really getting? Well, right. maybe maybe the fiber, but like, That's it's it. kind of crazy when you get to thinking about it. Um, and, and spinach is just one example, you know, uh, extreme, but uh, but it goes across the board. You know, and today, the average fruit and vegetable in the United States has traveled 1,600 miles. It's been in transport for days and weeks before you get it. And then you put it in your refrigerator, and then you cook it, and then you do whatever, and you know, basically you're getting some fiber and uh, very limited of the phytonutrients, the vitamins, the, say that. Yeah. you know, it just, so. Wow. 
gee, that's kind of, um, I, I mean, it's kind of scary that, that you're not getting the nutrients, even if you're eating healthy, even if you're eating organic. And so I think a lot of people are going to get informed today about this. Why you say that, you know, we shouldn't be having the absorbic acid was eye opening, but also the fact that a lot of these vitamins have the hydrochloric acid and the formaldehyde. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what we prime. I hate to say a dead body with, but I think the morgue uses that. That's that's what it is. Yeah, uh, that's, that's kind of yeah. scary. Jeez. And you know, or cyanide. Like I say, you know, there was an article written years ago by a lady in Wall Street Journal said the case against vitamins, and uh, she said very few people realize that that the vitamins that we consume today are produced in laboratories and they are using toxic uh, chemicals and uh, and things that you would never put in your body. And, and she she names them like the formaldehyde, the cyanide, the, the benzene, the, you know, uh, just several things that are the pharmaceutical companies use to produce this. Um, and, you know, again, uh, it's beyond me how we've got to a point that we have these chemical isolates uh, in everything today, in all of our foods, in, you know, uh, they're all the same. So whether it's produced in, whether it's sprayed on a cereal, whether it's put in a capsule, whether it's put in a liquid, um, I have a, a slide that I, I, I show these different examples of um, of a nutritional panel, and I do it for a. I'll just tell you, it's Cocoa Krispies, you know, and it, it shows all the vitamins in Cocoa Krispies. Then, in parentheses on the side of it, it says B6, pyridoxin hydrochloride, B12, cyanocobalamin, uh, uh, you know, uh, vitamin C, ascorbic acid. So then I compare that with the number one selling uh, vitamin coming out of GNC. I sell it, I compare it to the number one selling network marketing vitamin complex. I can compare it to the number one selling prenatal vitamin. And I say, is this the same or is it different? They are identical. They are, you know, what? Uh, yeah, so... And I, I even have all except for the sugar and the cocoa crispies. All, all, all except for the sugar. But I'm just saying the the uh, source and even the laboratory that produces it is the same. Uh, so, <laughs> so you're wow, getting that is even more eye opening. Uh, I and, and the interesting thing, this number one selling prenatal vitamin, right on the top, 100 percent natural. But if you, uh, but I take, I take that and I show it and I show it compared. I said, wow. if, if you're going to get this stuff, go ahead and buy Cocoa Krispies or get Diet Coke Plus or get something that, because it's a lot cheaper, but it's identical stuff made in the same laboratories. It just happens to be sprayed on a cereal versus put in a capsule. And, and whereas the number one selling one out of GNC, they just put a lot more of it. They call it mega men or mega women. And and instead of a hundred percent RDA, they go five thousand percent RDA. So you uh, so if a little bit is not doing you any good, why would you take a lot more of it? <laughs> you know, but there you go. I mean, sometimes that's the way people think is yeah. that more is better, but really, it isn't necessarily. Um, I want to dive into some other topics here because there's so many that look interesting to me. How has the ancient forgotten natural healing of silver, how is it now being studied as a potent antiviral, antibacterial agent for modern diseases? I mean, like it's been utilized by civilized, civilized cultures like Greeks and Romans. Right. You know, the interesting thing is it's got a lot of, it's like anything else. There's, there 
uh, it's advanced so much that there are forms of it that have uh, uh, the one I've got has at least um, 500 studies behind it. And the interesting thing, after we went through our fiasco with COVID, and there were people, you know, suggesting that that nano silver uh, could be very beneficial, and you had the naysayers said, "Nah, there's no science behind it. There's no this." Well, interestingly enough, and I'll be happy to send it to you, Linda, the National Institute of Health, which is considered the uh, the government's you know, authority on all health issues. Last year, or year or in 2021, came out with a study. It is entitled Nano Silver Proven Potent Antiviral Against SARS CoV 2. All right. That is, and then they identified in this study the exact particle size and the concentration. Oh, I definitely that, want that. Yeah, it was 10 parts per million and a concentration of 10 nanograms per milliliter. Oh okay, gosh. that is the exact formula that I have. And and we use a patented wow. process to permanently bond the silver molecule to the water molecule so it never comes out of solution. But... You know, candidly, it's my number one seller because it flat works. I don't care if you're taking uh, for antiviral, antimicrobial, but, you know, I have a gel. Any skin condition you have, any skin condition like rosacea, e eczema, uh, sunburn, this gel is like a miraculous. I can attest. I can so attest what you're saying about that gel. And I don't know, like I literally went in a health food store. I, I was going to a competition. I jumped on, you know, I was trying to help everyone else. So I missed my box because I was worried about other people. I've never done that before and totally sliced to the bone where the nerve is and they couldn't stitch it because I didn't have any fat right there on that shin bone. So uh -huh. literally I went to the health food store and this lady named Lucky, it was my lucky day. <laughs> she said, here, let me put this on you. And it was colloidal silver gel. I don't even know the brand now, but she put it on. And literally, I want you to know, she get, you know, gave me some and I don't have a scar, which is crazy because it was i i could show you guys in the show notes my gash if you're not faint of heart but literally it healed because of that that gel and i have no scar you can't even tell where i sliced it no that there's no question the the power of that my sister is a nurse practitioner and uh she uh when she knew I was uh, uh, incorporating silver into what I do, uh, she basically just flipped out. Like, uh, I, <laughs> why would you do that? I've treated people with Argyria. I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. She did, you know, I mean, it was just like very traditional wow. um, approach. Well, fast forward not to one day she was in my home and she was in the living room talking to my wife and she was telling her she has rosacea and it's reoccurring and she can't get rid of it. She's, she knows all the who's who in the medical industry. She's tried topical. She had tried internal, but it, it, uh, and it was painful. It was embarrassing. It was on her face and I'm sitting in the kitchen and I'm hearing all this. I finally said to her, her name is Ruth. I said, Ruth, Listen, try this gel. It's not going to turn you blue. I guarantee you that. And I said, um, well, you she's have not nothing to lose. It. She's not ingesting it. Yeah. Yeah. So literally three days later, her husband called me and said, your sister is eating crow. That was four years ago. Uh, she, it, it cured her rosacea. She then started using it in her practice. She was a nurse practitioner, worked at a clinic. 
with anybody with any kind of skin condition. She was in here yesterday. She takes, I have a silver uh, cream, Tanalee, you know, that's great for uh, especially skin condition. Uh, you know, she uses it in, uh, under makeup, but she's never had a reoccurrence in four years. And I've seen the same thing in any skin condition. And healing, you know, it is actually FDA approved as a wound healer. That's amazing. I I really didn't know what I didn't know, yeah. you know, until I like witnessed it. And then I was like, wow, that's pretty potent and powerful. Now you could, I know some people take it as kind of like um, antibacterial, antifungal type thing. Explain that. But can't you turn gray if you take too much and ingest it? Well, if you're taking it in the form, so let me explain this. There's, there's, uh, as you said, silver has been known as an antimicrobial from the dark ages on, you know, and when the pioneers came across here, they put silver dollars in the water, uh, you know, the, that, that uh, adage uh, born with a silver spoon in your mouth actually refers to the wealthy who are able to afford silver that was also the what they uh, help with their their children and and anything in antibacterial. However, um, there are there is called uh, colloidal silver that just refers to it in solution, but there's there is uh, ionic silver, uh, and 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 then there's nano silver. Now, nano silver that we have, as I said, is permanently bonded to the bottom water molecule, doesn't ever come out of solution. So you only use a very small portion of it, 10 parts per million, whereas this colloidal and or ionic silver, uh, they have to use massive amounts of it. Uh, it can be 5,000 parts per million or 10,000 parts per million. And it does come out of solution and it does accumulate in the body and it can turn the body gray. Uh, it's not it's not something that will necessarily hurt you, uh, you know, health wise, other than you can't change the color of your skin. But yeah, the, not, I the don't want to walk line, around gray. <laughs> yeah, the bottom line is in our nano silver, it's absolutely impossible to uh, have any of that uh, because because of the uh, the permanently bonding, because it's a nano silver, because you only lose a very small portion of it, and it's in and out of your body in twelve hours. You would never. Uh, we have the uh, one of the scientists who developed this form of it has taken it every day for 15 years, did a blood test, showed no trace of silver in his body. So it is in and out of the body uh, within 12 hours and does that its sounds job. That's good. Yeah, that sounds like like a winner. Um, let's talk about enzymes and probiotics. Uh, I think. I think a lot of people now have heard about probiotics, but I don't think as many people actually understand the role that enzymes play in the body, how important they are. And then with the probiotic, how it's kind of a, a, a marriage, so to speak, for your digestion. Absolutely. Um, everything in the body, Every function from blinking to thinking requires enzymes. Okay. So there is nothing, there is nothing that happens in our body that doesn't require enzymes. Our body, when we were born, comes with a finite capacity to produce enzymes. All foods in nature come with enzymes in the raw state. Every food. And it's designed to break that food down when we consume it so our body can absorb it and utilize it. Well, what percentage of the food do we eat today is raw? 90% um, of what we have is either cooked or processed. Uh, when you cook any food to 118 degrees, you kill the enzymes. So what does that happen? If we're, if, if, 
if we have a finite amount, that's why when mm -hmm. you get in your, you know, my age, I'm 77, most people in my age have digestive issues. They have, you know, acid reflux, GERD, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, food allergies, etc. It's because they have depleted over the their life that ability for the body to produce all the enzymes it needs. So it only produces the enzymes that are critical. And uh, we end up with a lot of uh, problems for undigested food, food allergies, et cetera, you know, lactose intolerant, gluten sensitive, all of those things that are dependent upon enzymes breaking those down. So bottom line is, uh to offset that we need to take when we consume foods especially processed foods cooked foods we need to take plant digestive enzymes that will break the protein break the carbohydrates break the fats down break the sugars down so that our body can use them otherwise we're going to have some digestive issues um Right. And, and arthritis, if you're storing all of this excess into your your joints, your like different places in, in the body, it's got to go somewhere. But isn't it also like when you're aging, you start like you said, the enzymes, but hydrochloric acid is less, um, you know, the natural occurring stuff that helps you to to digest your food. And it's pretty important then at this point, if you don't want your food to sit on you and you want to eliminate that you're taking some type of enzymes, I would think. Absolutely. I mean, there's no question. I take enzymes literally with every single meal. Uh, I know how important they are and what they do. Uh, you mentioned probiotics. Uh, they work hand in glove with probiotics for you know a healthy microbiome, a healthy gut. And that is key to digestion. It's key to your immune system. It's key to so many bodily functions. They call the brain uh, gut uh, link. It's so key. Uh, a lot of the health issues we deal with originate in the gut. And so, you know, um, if you're on antibiotics or just exposed to all the toxins, that we are exposed to every day, you're going to have a compromised gut. Uh, and and so getting, replacing and keeping that blood, that flora in the gut is very important. A good probiotics, good prebiotics, good postbiotics, um, and, as well as those digestive enzymes to help the body break the foods down, utilize them, the probiotics are key in, in uh, directing those nutrients where they need to go and facilitating them, like I was talking about, getting them into the, 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 the light socket, and then something else has to turn the light on so it all works the way it's supposed to. But yeah, they, they are key. Um, and, you know, we have in our, in our digestive enzyme formula uh, a couple of patented and one patent pending enzyme to one of them uh, has clinical studies show it breaks down gluten. The other breaks oh, down the hard to break down awesome. proteins such as dairy proteins. Yeah. You know, so if you're gluten sensitive or if you're lactose intolerant, you know, yeah. it should really help in those areas. But we also have a patent pending enzyme that's revolutionary right now that actually converts 50 to 90% of the sugar you consume into fiber in the gut. So think of it this way, you have a big starchy meal and you finish it off with a dessert. And, and if you had taken this uh, enzyme blend that has this enzyme in there that literally instead of converting normal table sugar as it would into glucose and fructose it converts it into fructose and fiber so it's taking the what would normally be glucose 
and converting it into fiber in the gut. So it's flattening out your glucose curve. It's, a, it's eliminating your body's need to trigger the release of insulin to kind of deal with all that excess sugar, which we're getting. And so, and so, and it's converting it into fiber in the gut, which is also adding to as a prebiotic to feed the good bacteria in your gut. And oh, it helps thanks. create satiety. So, you know, it's it's a pretty amazing new blend of enzymes that cover all the bases, breaking the foods down, uh, uh helping the hard to break down proteins like dairy and gluten as well as converting 50 to 90% of the disaccharides. Any, any, what I'm saying disaccharide is that any sugar that comes in a, that is not a monosaccharide, meaning it's table sugar, it's starches, it's most of the sugars we consume. So good, so good. How do you think that high blood sugar is connected to all chronic disease and most modern causes of death? Uh, well, I think there's a lot of research today showing that the underlying cause for a majority of the health issues that the American public are dealing with, uh, not just diabetes, but heart disease, uh, uh, all of the different uh, inflammatory diseases, which are 99.9% .9 of what we're dealing with, that the glucose spikes, the out of control glucose spikes and curves uh, are one of the primary, if not the primary cause of these health issues. So the more we can flatten that curve, the more we can minimize those spikes, uh, the, the more we're enabling the body to uh, function the way it was designed to function and to overcome or ward off some of the the stuff that we're exposed to and dealing with you know that. and, yeah that's so good and right now i'm doing i'm drinking cinnamon tea which helps to lower the blood sugar and keep from having those insulin spikes um but also you guys don't drink too much coffee because that also would spike your uh, it spikes your blood sugar. Most people don't realize that. And that's a lot. It's a lot of why you crash and burn after you've had uh, several cups. Yeah. Well, there's there's a lot of things that people don't realize what they're doing. But, you know, we did some tests. We, we took nine people, you know, uh, and all we did was we had them take their normal diet, we uh, we we outfitted each one of these people with a continuous glucose monitor so that they could okay yeah they could uh, follow their their glucose curve and we had the ability to track it so um the idea was take uh go 5 days eating their normal diet and then 5 days eating the diet but taking the enzyme blend an hour oh. before each meal Okay. So of the nine people, the average we had, we reduced the glucose spike in all nine across the board, average of 62.2%. Wow. Drop that, that, those spikes. Now uh, that is That's amazing. Hugely significant. And it that is. all converts to what that's doing to you're not getting the insulin released. It's not creating, you know, it, it affects our weight. It affects our health. It affects our mood. It affects our, our brain fog, clarity, all of those things. Oh, 100% your brain. I mean, uh, oh my gosh. And I love what you're saying because the big thing right now is Ozempic, Wagovi, all of these yeah. drugs that are kind of like you know people were diabetic originally taking them but look they're losing weight because it's helping them with like their their glucose uh so if i could take an enzyme with like no side effects and help with my glucose 
I mean, is it helping people with their weight loss then when they take oh, these enzymes? You, know, you are so right on. I mean, you you grab it very quickly, obviously, <laughs> but but that's exactly right. You know, the wow. the Ozempic, the Wegovy, the semi-glutide, you know, is a drug. And if you read all of the side effects of that thing, you would never take it. I mean, you know, it's just like, uh, but but in reality, it is doing exactly what my enzyme blend called sugar to fiber is doing. Uh, it it is minimizing the spike. Uh, it is. Uh, creating some satiety because you've got uh, the, the fiber being created in the gut and you are lowering the amount of calories coming out of sugar because it's converting 50 to 90% of that sugar into a fiber. So that calorie no longer factors into what you're doing. So it's definitely going to have a, a, a benefit on the weight. But the real critical thing is is those spikes and the health benefits you're getting without the side effect that you get taking a drug. Well, I mean, this is another thing that I, I mean, I have been looking into this. I am a health professional after all. And one of my nurses that comes to me was talking about how it keeps things from moving through the digestive tract as fast. And that's part of the reason also why you're not hungry. Um, and people, some people either they get constipated or they may po possibly have the other the runs, right. but, but my thinking is you don't want things staying in your digestive tract too long, right? No, that's no. not healthy. No, that's why the enzymes are so good because they're breaking it down, but they're breaking it down, you know, for the body utilized, but they're also, like I say, converting a something that normally would uh, do the body harm or creating something into something that's beneficial, sugar to fiber, you know? So um, there's a, you know, and, and I, I have, it's, it's fast becoming and has become my number one seller because it's, it's revolutionary. Uh, it will, uh, if you track it with a continuous glucose monitor or you prick your finger, you'll be able to see it. You can see that it dramatically affects flattening the curve. Uh, and But you can feel it. You can feel the difference. You don't get hunger, you know, 90 minutes after you've just eaten something. You don't get tired after you eat. You don't have these um, cravings, you know, that you would get kind of those three things are also a less scientific way to say, you know, this is what this is doing for me. Because oh, when you yeah. have these spikes and, and crashes, you know, you get hungry literally 90 minutes after you've eaten because your body yeah. basically said, Hey, I got all this empty calories, but I still need nutrients. Where are they? You know? So, right, right. And then that's the other problem, too, is if you're not eating nutritionally whole foods, like shopping the outer aisle of the grocery, staying away from the crack in the middle, basically, that's just filled with all of, you know, they stripped it of everything good. They filled it with all these synthetic things and it would live on the shelf for 10 years. How could that possibly be good for anybody when you get <laughs> when you get down to it? So eating the whole foods and also staying away from the high sugary um, over the top with the sugar because you're spiking your glucose right there. So I think so much knowledge today. This has just been so good. I know my audience is going to eat this up because you really brought so much. You are a wealth of information. Well, I've been, you know, as I said, I'm 77 years old and I've been immersed in this space for the last 45 years. For my personal health, I would I dealt with chronic fatigue syndrome, pneumonia twice, hepatitis twice, mononucleosis twice. 
Uh, I just had all sorts of health issues and I had to find a solution. It's in, and I did, it's in foods, but you've got to get the foods in the form that you know you're getting all those nutrients. Take away the guessing game. And, and, and that, you know, it's become my, my passion, my life um, is doing exactly that because uh, I grew up on a farm. I realize now what the, uh, uh, how different it is, the modern farming techniques. They don't mulch, they don't rotate crops. They, they use abusive amounts of herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, uh, premature harvest, treating them with chemicals to uh, make them look good. There's a there's a uh, mm -hmm. something called a birthday apple uh, that, I a, you know, you a could- A birthday go apple? birthday apple a birthday apple i have never heard of such <laughs> well what it is it got named that because it was a practice where they would harvest apples then they would uh treat them with a chemical called psycho uh propylene and then they would uh wax them and put them in cold storage and they wouldn't come out to the store shelf until a year later the only nutrient value left in that apple is sugar and fiber. Sounds terrible. But, it sounds but like something that uh, perhaps was given to Snow White. <laughs> yeah. That's it. But but it's just somewhat indicative of what we do in our oh my gosh. food space to uh, all about money and and appearance and nothing to do with Nutritional oh, okay. integrity. Oh my gosh, totally. Give us a, a just a quick rundown of what you do uh, in a day for your health. Me? Uh, well, I I have this product called Complete Essentials. It has over a hundred ingredients in there that are uh, that we vet out every one of them, where it comes from how it's processed. We have a lot to do with the processing and uh, whatnot, but it's all organic, non-GMO fruits, vegetables, grains, spices, herbs, etc. cetera. Uh, and then we have it third party tested so that uh, I have come in a box like this, you will see that it has a hundred percent RDA of all the vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, um, all from Whole Foods, because uh, where it says in parentheses says plant phytonutrient complex. Then you look over on the other side of the panel, and it tells you what the what's in the the phytonutrient complex. It's you know organic uh, broccoli, organic kale, you know spinach, et cetera. Then we submit it to a third party to validate and test that all of that is in there. So that's my insurance policy that I'm giving my body every single day, all the nutrients it needs to function the way it was supposed to function, to, to uh, give me a robust immune system to, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I mean, I'm, uh, I don't wear reading glasses. I used to, but I have 20-20 vision. I have a full head of hair. Uh, you know, I still have a six pack. I just, hey! <laughs> and so uh, it's, it's all about giving your body the nutrients. And so I just, that's what this complete essentials basically is what got me out of the health issues I was dealing with. I love that. And, and you're sharp and you're sharp and you have energy and like, I see it all right now, just talking to you. And I'm, I mean, seriously, it does matter. You guys, it matters. Every little thing you do for yourself and your health and the knowledge that you empower yourself with today, it all matters. And you have a special code for us, for everyone so that they can save 15%. Yeah, if you go on our website, which is uh, www.optivita, that's O-P-T-I-V-I-D-A, health.com, 
And then you use the code when you check out SWEAT15, you will get a, a discount. I just want everybody to at least try it because I'm telling you, the you will notice a difference. You will notice a difference in those enzymes. You will notice a difference in the complete essentials. What are the differences? Probably you will notice an energy boost. You will notice that you're more regular. Uh, a lot of people talk about uh, even noticing, uh, you know, the their nails and other things growing quicker and firmer. You know, I mean, it's just everybody notices something different, uh, but you'll also notice you don't get sick. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Mm -hmm. And that is so, so good. And I am definitely an advocate. I'm already wanting to jump on this myself. Um, you know, 60, going to be 61 next month. And I try, wow. thanks. I try <laughs> to take good care of myself, just like yeah. you. I would have uh, guessed a lot younger than that. So it's all about oh, investing yeah. in your health and your health shows like when you're when you're taking care of your health when you when you're um unhealthy you can also visually see it so you know do it because you want to be the best you and the most vibrant and the most energetic and the most productive um and everybody i don't know about you i'm going to get some of those enzymes that's the first thing i'm running for today <laughs> Well, I would definitely get that. And I would definitely get the complete essentials. Uh, you will notice a difference. I love it. Love it so much. Thank you so much for coming on. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I'm a health geek. I could ha have you on again because I can already tell um, that we would have so much more to go through than what we did today. So thank you so much. No, I'm happy to. I'm happy to come back anytime. And yes, you put a quarter in me and I'll keep going because I, I spent it. the last 40, 50 years digging deep in, in nutrition. And I love that. I love anyone that's passionate about uh, their, you know, craft and what they do and that really dive into it and really get the wealth of knowledge that you gave us today. So thanks again. And thanks everybody for listening to this episode. Make sure to use the code SWEAT15. Uh, thanks again, Frank, for coming on. You bet. Thank you, Linda. It was nice visiting with you. Bye everybody.